Hey everyone, happy Labor Day weekend. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today's video is going to be about osteogenesis imperfecta, osteoporosis, and osteopenia. So they all sound very similar. And when I was reviewing this way back when, I remember having to separate them into charts and figure out the differences because after a while, everything just starts to sound the same. So I made an osteo what board for us to review. So let's start off with osteogenesis imperfecta. And this is also called brittle bone disease. And this is a gene dysfunction. So I like that it has the word gene in osteogenesis because that literally means the formation of bone. And when we think imperfecta, it means that the formation of our bone is imperfect. There is a problem with our genes. So this can be inherited from either of our parents or both of our parents. And what happens is our collagen production is very low. Collagen helps us because it's a protein that helps strengthen our bones. So when we don't have enough of that collagen production, then it can lead to fractures and trauma to our bones when we are weight bearing. This will lead to malformed bones. So not only will they be brittle, but they can be short and our joints will be loose and overall our bone density will be lower. So if our bones are brittle, so are our teeth. So when we think about activities of daily living, this is also going to impact eating as well. In order to support people with osteogenesis imperfecta, we would be working on active range of motion as well as strengthening activities that they can tolerate. So weight bearing will help strengthen the bones. So will activities like water therapy as well as splinting and positioning depending on their needs. So patients with OI need to work on maintaining a healthy weight and diet as well as avoiding things like smoking, alcohol, and anything else that would really impact our bone density. According to the OI website, it's very common for people with OI to have hearing loss that begins in their early 20s. We also want to think about all the other aspects of our body that get impacted by having low bone density because there are a lot of structures in our body that rely on that. So there's bone conduction in our ears for hearing. Our teeth are made out of bones, so brittle teeth, which means that People will need extra dental care or crowning, and also respiratory problems are common because of chest wall deformity as well as spine deformity. When we think about the bones in our body and our overall skeleton being a framework for everything we do and everything we move, this really shows how much a person's experience with OI can impact their daily living skills because it's not just hearing, it's not just brittle teeth, but we have respiratory, we have our visual system, we have our cardiac system. Everything is going to get impacted in one way or another and depending on the severity of a person's OI, their symptoms and their quality of life is going to look different. Let's move on to osteoporosis. Osteoporosis literally translates into porous bone. So I like to take the pore from osteoporosis and porous bone and make that connection. Osteoporosis is progressive. The interesting thing about this is that it is a silent disease. So people oftentimes don't know that they have it until they have a fracture and get the diagnosis and this will cause bone fragility and it um, can cause hip and wrist fractures because of the bone weakness and that increases fall risk in a lot of patients as well as decreasing their ability to do daily living skills on their own. So back pain is usually higher your height will be shorter, and that will also come with a stooped posture, also known as kyphosis, which is the term for a hunchback back. Hunchback back. <laughs> and for people who have osteoporosis, weight bearing is going to be very painful and challenging because when you carry weight, 
something heavy, it's going to put pressure on those bones and joints and something's going to break. So that is a big no for osteoporosis patients. And the way that we help patients with osteoporosis is to really work on compensation strategies. So this is not remedial. We can't, we can't treat osteoporosis. We have to treat the symptoms and help the patient work around their limitations. So compensatory strategies as well as uh, positioning and activities of daily living retraining are all very helpful along with the environmental modifications to help them access their environment better as well as decrease fall risk things. So things like loose rugs or things that are in the hallway that are tripping hazards are all things that we want to clear for patients who have osteoporosis since they are more susceptible to fractures. In addition to this, I wanted to cover osteopenia and this one translates into bone loss. And basically, this is a precursor to osteoporosis. There are really no visible symptoms, and it just means that you are starting to have weaker bones and lower bone density, but it's not as severe as osteoporosis. So it is reversible, and you want to take measures such as taking calcium supplements, getting enough vitamin D, as well as decreasing bad habits such as smoking or high alcohol intake, and also increasing healthy habits such as daily exercise. So I'm going to link a study that I found on Harvard's website about osteopenia and osteoporosis and it really gives you a nice breakdown between the two and what you need to do. And they recommend that you should have 30 minutes of weight-bearing activity on most days. So exercise is very important and by weight-bearing exercise, it means things like running or walking. There has to be pressure that is being placed on your bones to increase muscle. Uh, so things like yoga would be great. But if you are doing something that requires no weight-bearing, then that isn't going to count towards supporting healthy bone growth and strengthening. So that's everything for today. I have a little risk section that we basically covered, but as an overall review, people who have osteoporosis are at higher risk for hip fractures, fall risk, as well as joint replacement surgeries, and generally bone density loss type of conditions are higher in the female population due to our general anatomy and our bone density loss as we get older. Obviously, as everyone gets older, we're all losing bone density. We're all getting weaker, but for women, that trajectory is much faster than men. So if you're a lady out there watching this video, please take care of yourselves and take some supplements. I like to take some iron and some calcium, as well as give yourself plenty of exercise and take the women in your lives for exercise too. Your mom, your grandma, take them on a walk on a nice day, do everything you can if they're around. So that is everything for today's video. While we're on this topic of good health, I encourage you guys to take a break and enjoy some sunshine, get some exercise if you can, and enjoy yourselves on this Labor Day weekend. Take care, and I will see you guys next time.
bone density loss type of uh, conditions because our bones are more fragile and they break down faster than men do every 10 years because of our calcium and well, I guess just because of how we're made, but, um, uh, ways to, pre uh, of course, everyone is getting older and our bodies become more fragile and our bones become weaker, especially women over men. But ways to avoid osteopenia is just establishing a healthy lifestyle. So this goes back to what we were talking about earlier about really preaching all the good stuff. Like we don't want to smoke. We, want, we don't want to drink too much alcohol. We want to make sure that we're getting sufficient exercise. Weight-bearing exercises are very important because that's how we build muscle. So... What running, walking, those are all examples of weight bearing. And we want to make sure we get enough of that, you know, on a daily basis. I will link a health uh, article from Harvard in the links below, and they're recommending at least 30 minutes on most days of some kind of weight bearing exercise. So that's a recommendation, as well as making sure we have enough calcium and vitamin D to enrich our bones in our daily diet. We already covered most of the risks of getting one of these conditions, but just as a review, hip fractures, fall risk, joint replacement, and, oh, actually, we already covered a lot of the risks that come with having either OI or osteoporosis, but I made a little, like, review here. So, hip fractures are common because our femur is taking a heavy load when we're standing because all that weight is really going on our femur on, on our biggest leg muscle well not muscle <laughs> because all that weight is going on our femur which is the biggest bone in our body so we really need to um here is a little cheat sheet on all the risks that come with either osteoporosis or osteogenesis imperfecta we covered most of them so this is a review hip fractures along with other weight-bearing fractures. Hips are really common because you have to think about how much weight is put on our femurs every day when we are standing and walking. It's a lot of weight on our legs. So femurs are at risk often and fall risk in general, which also leads to more fractures and joint replacement. And overall, women are at higher risk than men are because of our anatomy and just how our bones work. So I remember I read a study about how women's bone density decreases significantly more than men as they get older. So if you're a woman and you're watching this video, make sure you start to take your calcium supplements or multivitamins. I like to take iron as well. So it's just about preventative care and making sure that you live a healthy lifestyle. If you have been sitting all day at home on your computer studying, go outside, take a walk, get some fresh air. It's also going to prevent osteoporosis. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.